Good morning. Welcome to High Street United Methodist Church as we gather to worship, as we gather to learn to love, to care for our community, and to welcome our children and welcome one another. Today we're welcoming Troop 1707, which is our Girl Scout troop. Today is going to be Girl Scout Sunday, and Kim was telling me that this troop is uh, 12 years old. We, we've been in partnership with them for a dozen years, which is fabulous. Well, one of the things I want to ask, though, because we, we don't recognize Girl Scouts a lot. I know I was talking to Joanne Turner. So she can't stand up, but she was a Girl Scout. So I'm going to ask of all the other Girl Scouts, if you were a Girl Scout, please stand up. That's awesome. <clears throat> Girl Scouts make a really big deal into our world. Um, there's some things happening today also. Our youth um, and youth group tonight will be packaging up the college care packages and the military care packages. So today's the last day. If you had any goodies or, or sweets or treats that you wanted, me, wanted us to send to the college, or college and military kids. Wednesday begins the season of Lent with Ash Wednesday. Uh, it's that strange worship service that we go to and we get ashes on our forehead to remind us of our mortality and to start focusing our lives towards the suffering of Christ to remind ourselves of Christ's suffering and resurrection as we head towards Easter. This year, like last, like last year and previous years, we'll be partnering up with our community churches and we'll be attending Lenten services over at Hunterdale Christian Church. They'll have lunch at noon followed by a 30-minute worship service, followed by another lunch if you're really, really hungry. So, so there's opportunities for all those who don't work or those who have lunch breaks to go to the worship service and to experience lunch. Um, one more announcement. It's going to be Jane. She's going to talk to you about community today. As she's coming up, though, I want to tell you about something else. I want to talk to you about some angels. We had some angels do some great work. Mr. Evans lost power. The mission house that we've been working on, Mr. Evans lost power because the tree fell and, and knocked out his power. Well, we had two gentlemen who you rarely ever see because they're always up there in the AV booth, uh, along with Ed Marks, who plays um, music at our early service. They went and for about three hours froze as they, as they hooked up his electricity and got power going again. So I want to give Ray, and Kent, Kent, Ray Maya and Kent Stevenson a round of applause. You, you can't see it, but there's this red glow coming from the <laughs> AV booth of blushing. So anyway, Jane. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jane Riddick Fries, for those of you who may not know me. I am chair of the Better Together Community Day event. This event will be held on Saturday, April 25th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. here at the church. I wanted to share with you briefly this morning a little history about this and what to expect that day. Our church started this in 2016 as a healthy community day, and we had about 500 in attendance. We held another one in 2018 and themed it Better Together and consider this as part of one of our missions of our church for our local community. In 2018, we had about a 700 in attendance and partnered with Southampton County Social Services. This year, we are again partnering with Social Service as well as the Franklin Southampton Wellness Coalition. We have eight different committees and have been planning this event since May of 2016. I would describe this as our church having a very big party, so to speak. We are planning to host about a thousand people this year. Our food team will be cooking about 1,200 hot dogs and will be serving chips, fruit, popcorn, and to, to everyone that day for free. In fact, everything that day is free. All the booth spaces as well as all of the activities. The money for this event comes from our partners, several sponsors, as well as the church. There are tons of activities for all ages. Bounce houses, pony rides with Susan Holloway, Grays and Acres, selfie pictures with potbelly pigs, face painting, cornhole, family field races, knitting, cupcake decorating, an essential oils class, a photography class, yoga, Zumba, firehouse, train rides, as well as live music with our own Ed Marks, Kara and Galen Butler, and Ed Canada, Ed Canada and his band. Kathy Brown will be singing the national anthem at 12 p.m. and the Nightingale is scheduled to land on our front lawn at 2 p.m. 
Needless to say, it is a packed day. In addition, we currently have over 50 vendors signed up from businesses such as 1B, 2B, and Viva, as well as the Alzheimer's Organization, 4-H, both the city and the county police, the Children's Center, Smart Beginnings, United Way, our Girl Scouts, the hospital, and so on and so on. The night prior, there will be a celebration music service sponsored by our church, Celebration Church, and the Franklin Baptist Church here at 6 p.m. From five to six on that same day, we will have a volunteer pep rally and a discussion of what to expect the next day. And we will be handing out all of the volunteer t-shirts on that Friday. In addition, the YMCA Leaders Club will be hosting a 5K cross country run across the street at Riverdale behind the school in memory of Tom Pearson. This is a fundraiser for them to raise money to go to Blue Ridge Leader School. That will begin at 8 a.m. and at 9.30, everyone will be directed across the street safely for their award ceremony and our event will kick off at 10 a.m. There are lots of activities everywhere and there will be people everywhere. And we are asking 100% participation from our church if possible. It is rather a large logistical event and we need as many volunteers as possible to keep everybody safe and to ensure that everybody has a great time. If you're in town that day and can come either volunteer on a committee or be an ambassador or host for the church and mingle with the crowd, answer questions, direct them places, that would be awesome. Every volunteer will receive a free orange t-shirt. We need your t-shirt size by Tuesday if possible. There is a pink form in everybody's bulletin, and if you could fill that out and place it in the offering plate, we would appreciate it. In past years, there have been children who have said this is the best event they have ever participated in. The smiles on the children's faces, some who don't always get to experience all of the activities that we provide that day, warms your heart. This truly is a mission to be proud of collaborating, partnering between the city and the county, fellow churches, businesses, and nonprofits for a community that is and will be better together. Thank you. Let's give some appreciation to Jane for her leadership, too. Yeah. Now I'm going to turn it over to the Girl Scouts because they're about to lead us. Will everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will now be doing the Girl Scout Promise. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will be doing the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authorities, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Please join me in the call to worship. When we encounter you, we meet the Word. When we open the book with an invitation to the Spirit, we read the Word. When we listen with open ears, eyes, and hearts, we hear the Word. When we follow, no matter how difficult, we become the Word.
please join me for the morning prayer. Blessed Blessed Lord, Lord, who who works works numberless numberless miracles miracles through us, us, who gives gives us rest from our burdens, who challenges us us through our brokenness. brokenness. You have raised us up to glorify Jesus. Lead us to rise above the sleep of our happy. Open us to sing your praises without distraction. Open us to confess to you without holding back. You are God, glorified in all and by all. Eternal Father, begotten Son, all holy a good life-giving spirit. Amen. Let us join together in singing a hymn of praise, hymn number 514, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. After standing that long, we were indefinitely standing up for Jesus, right? Yeah. Amen. It was good. Uh, <laughs> we join together now with prayers of joy as well as concern. I know several kids were excited and joyful because the snow came, and, and even adults were joyful the snow came, and, and school was out. It was a great time, and several adults were excited that the snow was gone because <laughs> school will resume tomorrow. It's a, it was a great snow, a wonderful time. We do need to keep many in our prayers. Ken Story, who had the, uh, heart, uh, had the, had the, had the blood, blood clot, um, Ken is home now, and that's a joy, but we want to keep him in our prayers as he continues to heal. Mildred Mason is still in the hospital. Uh, before, we were telling folks not to visit her. Now, I encourage you to, to go and visit Mildred. She needs company as she continues to heal from her fall. Declan Richard, this is um, uh, Kathy Bidwell's uh, grandson, uh, got sent to the hospital this morning. 
We want to keep Declan in our prayers. As well as Lois Billings. Lois got moved out of a hospital into the rehab. Keep Lois in our prayers. Along with baby Levi, um, that's a child who, who has a rare disease. We want to keep him in our prayers. Uh, Robbie Purvis, who ha had, has surgery. And Greta Hall, as she continues to, to recuperate and get better. Let us take these, our joys and our concerns, to our Lord and Savior today. Let us pray. Beloved Christ, you are the Word, and to you, the spoken Word, we come. The Word made flesh, the Word that is still with us today. We invite you here, and we invite you to change and to reshape us as we gather with our hearts, our hearts filled with praise, our hearts filled with joy, our hearts broken with burden, our hearts desiring transformation and change in this world. Lord, you've heard our concerns and our conversation. You know where we ache, where we worry, where we are anxious. Lord, in your mercy, send your spirit of peace, especially to the hospitals and to those at home who don't expect to live much longer. Go, Lord, and be there, and send us by your spirit to be voices of comfort, to be challenged to the authorities to bring about the kingdom of God through your love. All this we pray, praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
reluctant to worship our Lord and Savior, let us give of ourselves through our tithes and our offerings as the ushers come forward. to do the offertory prayer. God of power and love, we come to worship this day in anticipation, to hear the music, to be fed with the word, to reconnect with family, but most of all, to listen to your voice as it might speak to us in the silent moments. May your goodness and caring be affirmed in the gifts we give, and as worship comes to an end, may we hear Jesus' voice sending us out into the mission field. And may we listen and go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join together in singing, Lord, Speak to Me, hymn number 463. <laughs>
You may be seated. At this time, we invite all the children to come forward for a game of charades. The children's time. Have a seat. We're going to play a game. Well, maybe you don't need to sit. Well, well go ahead and sit down. Let's try it out. Mm -hmm. We'll try this out. All right, so here's how this game's going to work. You guys ready to play a game? Are we allowed to play games in church? Yeah, we're going to play a game. Okay, so I'm going to show you a word, and then you've got to somehow do something. You can't say any words, but you're going to do something, and they're going to guess what the word is. Make sense? Okay, so you ready? Here's the first word. Ready? Set, go. Excited. Did she get it right? Yeah, y'all were excited. Okay, you ready for the next one? Okay. Let everybody see it. Don't do anything until I say go. Okay. Ready, set, go. Sick. They're all sick. Yes. Sick children. Imagine that. Ready? Last one. Ready? Set. Go. I'm impressed. They got it from just that. Love. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did we say, did you have to say any of these words? Didn't have to say anything. And that's what we're talking about today, is we're going to be talking about the Word made flesh in us. We practice faith, not necessarily always by words. We've been talking about this phrase. We use this phrase in church called the Word of God. Now, this phrase is a pretty powerful phrase. We talk about it, and we, we talk about it like talking about Jesus. We talk about it when we talk about the Bible. We talk about it when we talk about preaching sometimes. But one of the most important places we encounter the Word of God is in us when we express the Word of God, not necessarily vocally, but through our actions. Pretty cool, huh? All right, pray with me. Let's pray together. God, thank you for your Word in us. Help us to love, to care for the sick, and to be excited about your faith. All through Jesus. Amen. Thank you all. God of power and love, we come to worship this day and it's easy to hear the music to be fed with your word. To reconnect with family, but most of all, to listen to your voice as in, in life speaks to us in the silence of Moses Ray, your goodness and caring for your food and the gifts we give. And as worship comes to an end, may we hear Jesus' voice sending us out into the mission field. And may we wish and go in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Majesty will transfigure our simple gifts in a way that will inspire all people to proclaim the everlasting riches of the world. Strip away our race confections so that for ourselves. I'm interrupt you for a second. Mm -hmm. This one instead. When the Son of Man appears in his majestic glory with all his angels by his side, he will take his seat on his throne of splendor. And all the nations will be gathered together before him. And like a shepherd who separates the sheep from the goats, he will separate all the people. The sheep he will put on his right side and the goats on his left. Then the king will turn to those on his right and say, You have a special place in my father's heart. 
Come and experience the full inheritance of the kingdom will that has been destined for you from before the foundation of the world. For when you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you found me thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I had no place to stay, you invited me in. And when I was fully clothed, you covered me. When I was sick, you tenderly cared for me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. Then the God we will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty and give you food and seven to drink? When did we see you with no place to stay and invite you in? When did we see you holy cloth and cover you? When did we see you sick and tenderly care for you or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, don't you know when you care for one of the least important of these, my little ones, my true brothers and sisters, you, the ones who they love for me? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good job. We've been talking about the word of God for the, this month in this, in this worship series, and one of the things we said was that first and foremost that God, the word of God is a who, it's Jesus Christ. The second thing we said was that the word of God is the Bible when we invite the Holy Spirit to come into the reading. That it's just a book unless we have this connection, this spiritual connection with the Bible and the text. It speaks to us through the Spirit. Last week, I shared about how difficult it is to be the Word of God in the preaching and this pulpit thing and in the proclamation of the Word. And I closed that sermon specifically by saying that we are what makes the difference about whether or not preaching is effective. That preaching is not effective unless we, the people of God, are changed by that word, unless we, the people of God, become the word. We're called today, and that's what we're going to focus on today, is what it means for us as the church, as the kingdom of God, to be the word of God. Let us pray together. Holy Lord, as we heard your scriptures read we seek to be the sheep and not the goats. We want to be those who visit you and care for you when you're ill, who look to you in prison, who feed you when you're hungry, who clothe you and provide a home for you when you're homeless. Lord, you speak to us and you tell us where to find you and the least important among us. Speak true within us today. Speak that we might speak Use us, Lord, to share your gospel as the word. Amen. When we're the church, when we're the kingdom of God, when we feed the hungry, it matters. John didn't know why he did it. He, he drove past that corner countless times. But that man was still there, still holding that cardboard sign, still asking for money. John made plenty of money. He'd recently entered into the new cannabis industry since his state had legalized it, and he was flush with cash. So John rolled down his window and started to reach for his wallet, and that's when something happened. Something spoke within him. And instead of simply gathering some change or some wads of cash, he invited the man to lunch. He invited him to lunch. He took him out for lunch, and John was surprised at the, at the lunch. Things changed. John found himself looking at Zach, and that's what Zach, that's what the man's name was, was Zach. John started looking at Zach and realizing that Zach and he had a lot in common, and things changed. He, he no longer saw simply a man holding a piece of cardboard, but now he saw him as a human being. And John was amazed because now they felt like old friends instead of strange recent acquaintances. When we are the church, when we're the kingdom of God, when we offer those who have no place to stay a home, it matters. Zach slowly made his way back under the bridge to the tent city 
of cardboard boxes and impromptu shelters. It was dark, and the night was filled with the murmur of those who gathered around the flames, just trying to keep their fingertips warm in this cold spell. Suddenly, though, he heard a scream. It must have been his training from the military or something, because instead of running away from the sound like everybody else would, he ran towards it. There in the dark, he found them. Two guys holding a girl down on the ground. He didn't have to do much. He had to do really anything at all except to say, Hey, leave her alone. To which they ran away, leaving her curled in a fetal position, disheveled, with clothing ripped. Zach started to say something and realized that nothing he could say would help. And at that point, he was about to walk away, but something within him spoke to him. Something within him said, do something more. He still had a little leftover lunch, the lunch that John had bought him. And so Zach said, would you like some food? She looked up at him. Suddenly an invitation was born. They started talking as they sat on the ground together. He found that Emily, that was her name, Emily, Emily and he had a lot more in common than anyone would have ever guessed. They both had served. They both had trouble adjusting to civilian life. She had only recently got a job. Zach still troubled to get work. Do you have a place to stay tonight? Zach said. Then he laughed. All I can offer you is a tent. But you can have it. And I'll sleep outside tonight. And don't worry. No one will bother you. No one will bother you. There's even some clothes in the corner to help replace the ones that are ripped. When we are the church... When we care for the sick, it matters. It makes a difference. Emily woke up and left the tent city to go to her new job. She knew it was going to be a difficult day because of the events of the night, but she found strength within herself, and and the help of Zach was so nice, and so she started, and she even had kind of a, a bounce in her step, feeling that today was going to be a great day, And as she reached the top of the overpass, that's when she looked down. It was in a heap there on the side of the road. There, disheveled, bloody, and a mess, lay one of the guys who had assaulted her the night before. It was obvious from the tire marks on the road and the way that his body was now crumpled and broken that he had been hit by a car. His body was so badly bruised and broken. His breathing was ragged. A part of her wanted to turn away and walk away. A part of her wanted to say he got what he deserved, but then something spoke within her. Something spoke within her. She had been a corpsman in the Navy. And instincts and training began taking over as she bit her lip, took a deep breath, and then started yelling for help. And then she went about the work of caring for the man who had attacked her. What's your name, she said as she worked, stopping the bleeding. Nick. Nick, he answered. As the lights and the sounds of the ambulance let him know that thanks to Emily... Nick was going to be okay. When we are the church, when we visit those in prison, when we care, it matters. It matters. Three weeks in the hospital, 19 surgeries, and two months of therapy later, Nick was still barely able to walk without a crutch or a countertop, or a walker. 
He was moving, but it was slow moving. And he was moving in a direction that he wasn't sure why he was still going in this direction. Yet something had spoke within him, and something made him believe this was where he was supposed to be. This was the right thing. This was what God wanted him to do. The guard opened the gate and let him walk into the visitation room. And there, there on the other side of the glass was the man who had been driving that night while under the influence of marijuana. He picked up the phone and smiled through the, gl- through the glass at the man who had caused him so much pain. And then he said, Good morning, John. Good morning, Nick. I still can't believe you visit me after all that I did to you, after that mistake I made. I know what you mean. I know what you mean, John. But let me tell you about this girl that I once tried to take advantage of and how she saved my life. And let me tell you about this guy who saved me from two assailants. And let me tell you about this other guy who took the time to buy lunch. His name was John. Let me tell you about the Word of God in the flesh. When we are the church, when we are the kingdom of God, when we practice the teachings of Jesus, not simply as somebody who's a follower, not just somebody who's following a yogi or a master or a Jedi, when we let the teachings take root within us, when we let the Word of God come deep within our hearts, We become the Word. In the Scriptures today, Jesus begins separating the sheep from the goats. And Matthew's Gospel is really emphasizing action over belief. Forgive as we... I mean, uh, forgive as we are forgiven. Ask, seek, knock, the door will be open to you. Judge not, and you will not be judged. All these words that the Gospel of Matthew uses are action words. Matthew sees us having a faith that's filled with action and being, not with simply believing. What separates the goats from the sheep is not their beliefs, not their doctrine, not how well they prayed or played or sang or preached or read, What separates the sheep from the goats is how they love Jesus. How they've loved Jesus. And the best part of this story is that their loving of Jesus is is not even realized by who they are. It is that this kind of love is a love that we don't even realize that when we're doing it. The sheep say to Jesus, When? When? When did we see you naked and give you clothing? When did we see you hungry and feed you? When were you in the hospital? Jesus, you were in prison. When did we visit you? And Jesus says, when you do it to the least important people, when you do it to the least of these, grace pushes us from within. The Spirit leads by a still, small voice. Jesus shows up in the least important people. There was a cashier named Wanda who didn't feel very important. Wanda had her name tag, and she she put it on. She felt it smudge and tear, and she thought to herself, Oh, Lord. This is going to be another thing my boss is going to complain about again. Her attire was a little disheveled. But when she got to work, she was there. She was all in. And even though it was a difficult morning, even though she had been running late, even though she knew the store was going to be filled with people this weekend buying milk and bread, 
Even though she knew it was going to be that kind of day, she gave it her all. She smiled through the difficult morning. She had patience with the man who was paying in cash one nickel and dime at a time, it felt like. She had courage to tell the young man that he was far too young to purchase that. And she persistently gave it her all, her best, to each and every customer because she knew her job was to be not just somebody who rang things up, but it was her job to offer hospitality and care. The next gentleman laughed, which made her stop and say, what's so funny? She's like, he said, what's your name? It's Wanda. She pointed to her name tag. It's Wanda. And he said, look at it again. And so for the first time since that morning, she looked down at her name tag, the one that she had scratched and disheveled and messed up. The A on the end of her name was gone. And the A in the middle of her name had lost its little hook at the top. And now it looked like an O. So Wanda was now word. She laughed, and he laughed with her, and he said, you know, there's a lot of truth in that. She said, really? Yeah. Sometimes the only gospel anyone will ever read will be you. Sometimes the only gospel that will ever be read is us, you and me. Be the word. Be church. Go with God and share peace in this world. We've been given this gift. We've experienced Christ, the word in flesh. We, we get to read the text and hear God speak through the spirit and the preaching and the prophecy. And now, go. Go be the word, be the church, be the gospel that people will read. There's a trend today a lot of churches are doing that I really like, I'll be honest. They have nice welcome signs as you come in the parking lot, which is not all that unusual. But on the other end, as you leave the parking lot, a lot of churches are starting now to put signs up that say this, you are now entering the mission field. Because we are. We are the word of God that gets carried out from here. And a lot of them will use this passage of scripture, Matthew 25, as a reminder that Jesus is not just here in the preaching. Jesus is not just here in the singing. Jesus is not just here in the hearing. Jesus is there, out in the world where the least important person is waiting for the word, waiting for you, and waiting for me. Amen? Go be the word. Go be church. Go with God and make peace. Let's join together as we sing, Here I Am, Lord, hymn number 593. Will you stand as you're able?
Buy cookies. <laughs> and now what? The ref God the in peace. Amen. After y'all ladies. Mm-hmm. Y'all gotta be